Hello everyone, Helen here. How are you today? I hope you're okay. I'm okay, I've just got back from another camper van trip and we had a lovely time. Uh, we didn't quite get blown away by Storm Kathleen, <laughs> nearly. <laughs> I'll tell you more about that in a separate podcast which will be a week or two after this one. Uh, and uh, yeah, I took a few crafts with me and uh, I'm going to show you uh, today what I've been up to. Um, I've got a couple of crochet projects and a couple of knitted ones and um, I've got some news of a bonus video that I've been making for some of you. I'll tell you about that later. And um, I'm going to finish with a, a little, little video um of well no, I'll, I'll leave that <laughs> you, you can wait and see that see that later uh, but if you do ever want to just look at a particular thing don't forget that there's time stamps that you can look for below the video or as somebody uh, helpfully told me uh, if you're watching on the television you can still find those time stamps if you scroll along the bottom of the video and there's like little lines and you can see where the next section uh, has been highlighted so yeah there's always a way of just going to the things that you really want to but hopefully most of you just are happy just to sit and listen to me chatter away about what I've been doing. So the first project I'm going to show you is a crochet one and this is uh well I've been prompted to do this one because I saw that a couple of people were joining in with a toft doll crochet along and this is being hosted by, oh, um, oh, I can't remember his name. On Instagram, he's Welsh Tenor. Uh, and I'll put, on, I'll put on the screen the name of his uh, YouTube channel. So he's hosting this uh, doll crochet along, which I think runs until, I think the end of April. That might not be quite correct, but... If you would like to know more about it, then I suggest you go to uh, to that channel. <laughs> Isn't it? I'm, I'm so sorry, I've forgotten the name of it. Anyway, I'll put a link to it in the description box. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, so I bought um, ages ago, a few months ago, uh, a kit for making Toft's Cabin Girl because I'd seen that Jeanette from Crafty Cloud Creations had bought one and I thought oh that's so lovely and then I saw somebody else making one a uh, lovely Pamela from uh, the Ginger Cat Crochet uh, YouTube channel which I'll talk a bit more about a little bit later uh, so I thought oh I would really love to make another Toft doll because I've made one already from the Toft uh, Doll Emporium I think it's called and that's Pearl see you there who is our camper van mascot, as probably most of you know, and she travels with us wherever we go. And I, I really love her, and I've been wanting to make another one, not particularly to take in the camper van. We'll be soon. There'll be no room left for us. Um, yeah, but so I, so when I saw the cabin girl pattern, I thought, oh, she's lovely. I'd like to make her. So um, yeah, so Pearl does now have a friend so let's just pick her up here she is and she is called Meg and looking very smart she isn't actually quite well I don't know maybe she's finished no I don't think she's quite finished actually because I'm going to do one or two more things um, but if I just take you through sort of the the making process of Meg um, you begin with the uh, you begin with the, at the bottom of the body and you work your way up and and then do the head so that's all in one so the first thing that I did um, which is not in the pattern but based on my experience of making pearl is that I didn't want or I wanted to find a way of avoiding this wobbly neck problem that lots of uh, crochet dolls do have and what what I came up with was to 
put something inside the neck. Well, it's not, it's not a new idea, obviously. <laughs> but uh, so what I did was um, fix together some wooden kebab sticks. I think I had a bundle of about four. And then I wrapped it in wool stuffing, that which I was stuffing the doll with. And then put it down, made a, a suitable sized hole down into the body and and then it extended up into the head nearly to the top of the head but not quite and that has made a really really firm firm head there's no wobble on the neck as well you can't really see that because i'm just moving it but there's no wobble on the neck just but it still feels soft still feels nice and soft you can't feel that there's anything um hard inside so I think it would actually still be use, suitable for giving to a, a child to play with. I mean, I'm not planning to do that with, with her. Uh, so that was the first adaptation that I made. The next challenge with making these dolls is if you decide to make the full hands. Now, if you have this pattern, you can just do a rounded hand, which is nice and straightforward and looks perfectly good. I actually did a little video of me uh, crocheting or a little bit of the hand before I put the thumb on because you have to do the you do the hand shape and then you do each of the four fingers and then you add the thumb on afterwards. So here's a little video of me just having a go at this very fiddly job of adding one of the fingers. So I, I am really pleased with how they've turned out, but it wasn't very, um, well, I know the instructions were fine for the fingers. The thing I had a problem with was understanding uh, the, the written instructions for the thumb. I, I had no clue what it meant in the pattern, but thankfully, uh, Kerry Lord, the designer of the pattern, had uh, done a video of how to do the hands. So if you're wanting to, um, make one of these and learn how to do the hands. It is a really helpful video. So then it had no problem doing the thumb other than the fiddliness of it. Then I added the hair to her head. I like the way that you crochet just brown or whatever color you're doing the hair first. Uh, and then it gives you a, a clear idea of where you're gonna um, fix the strands of hair and I love doing the hair, it takes quite a long time, but uh, yeah, you just, you know, use your crochet hook and pull it through and put the strands through the loop that you've made and then, and then go on from there. Almost ran out, well I did run out of yarn actually for doing the hair, so there is still a little patch on the back uh, with no strands of hair in, but she's got enough hair and, you know, nobody's going to be bothered about her a bit that's not got any hair in it it doesn't show when you look at her so uh, and then we came to the clothes and I did the trousers as they were in the pattern uh, but I decided to go off on my own <laughs> do my own thing with the jumper because having watched uh, Pamela 
uh, on Ginger Cat Crochet. I know that she had a little bit of a tricky time with the with the jumper, and uh, and, and another thing is that the idea is that you make the jumper so far, and then you have to put the jumper on and then do the neck, and so the jumper is not able to come off. And I don't like having a doll where you can't take the clothes off. <laughs> so I had to come up with an alternative pattern. So I was at round at my mum's and she showed me a book that she's got with some crochet doll, doll well, a crochet doll in and loads of clothes. So I got the idea from that, the jumper pattern in there. And so I started at the bottom. I worked my way up and um, so I did it completely differently to the toft pattern anyway. And then when I got near the top, I uh, started going in rows instead of round and round so that there is a, a split down the back and I'll put a loop in and a button uh, at the back there. So this jumper definitely can come on and off. Uh, but the hat I did exactly as in the pattern and that that fits very nicely there and I did her mitts here which I put on a string it didn't say to put them on a string through the jumper but in one of the photos in the pattern it looked like that's what had been done so that's what I did I added a, a chain and threaded it through her jumper sleeves and then she won't lose her mitts and as for the other things in the pattern, there's some slippers and a hot water bottle and a cup of tea that you can crochet. Uh, I might might not do those. I think Cabin Girl actually is rather an outdoor girl. And what I might make instead of slippers are some boots. And uh, Pearl's got boots. And I'm just going to make her some boots um, out of the Toff Doll uh, pattern. And yeah, so I used, because it was a Toft kit, I had all of the Toft alpaca yarn and it's absolutely beautiful. When I made um, Pearl, I used Escapee's Stonewashed for her and for, for the doll herself, not for her clothes. I don't think I've used that. Oh, I might have done actually. Oh, I think I used Escapee's Stonewashed for everything. Um, and she is a little bit bigger than uh, Meg. And I think that is probably because of the yarn being different. So I'm ever so pleased with her. And she did actually come on the camper van trip with us. I, I think another thing in the pattern is that you're meant to crochet around the bottom of the leg to make it look like she's wearing socks. But um, I probably won't bother to do that since I'm going to do boots and they'll come over the bottom of the trousers anyway. So, so there we go. There's Meg. And so next, right, next I'm going to show you Florence the donkey, who I've already shown you in a previous podcast, but she now has clothes. So here she is wearing a lovely uh, pinafore and a scarf. And she even has a rucksack of her own, a backpack of her own. So the bottom half of her pinafore is based on the moosh bear dungarees, except that I didn't obviously do the legs. I did do the hole for her tail though. And then I just went my own way. After that, I just um, move the scarf. I just uh, cast off stitches most of the way around and then left stitches on and knitted up. So there's this panel for the front. And then I just did little eye cords for the, I'll take you, take this off, for the um, straps going on her back. And before I'd made her clothes, um, when I took Florence outside to take photos, she borrowed a scarf from one of the other toys, which was uh, purple and pink. And she was rather fond of that scarf, but it didn't really go with, with her pinafore. So I made her a scarf of her own, just the same as the other one, out of some, this is made out of Debbie Bliss, Debbie Bliss Baby Cash Merino, which I've had in my stash for absolutely ages. Uh, so that's lovely, lovely and soft. She's very happy with that. She's very happy with the colours of her 
uh, pinafore because she really does like to be out in the woods, especially if there's lots of moss in the woods. And I think this kind of camouflages her a bit when she's out in the woods. So there she is. And then all ready to go gathering things in her rucksack. Put that back on you, shall we? And yeah, she managed to sneak into the camper van as well when we went away just, just last week. So, <laughs> so she has actually been in the woods. And yes, so there we go, all dressed, ready for our adventures. So next project, another knitted project, and that is another bear. Well, I've been wanting for ages to make another tutu bear by Cynthia Valley, which is not in the book Motion Friends, but it's one of Cynthia's uh, separate patterns. So I've made, uh, I think, four of these little bears. This is Benedict who lives with me. He's not going off to live with anybody else. And I have another one, like a cream colored bear who's called Mistletoe. And she's got a Christmas jumper on. So she really sits with all the Christmas things. And then a couple of other bears I've made that I've gifted. But ever since I made these little bears and they are like big enough just to sit on your hand, I've been wanting to make a bigger one uh, using thicker yarn and thicker needles. And so that's what I finally got round to. And so here he is. Uh, he's called Bernard. And where he even got his fine jumper finished just in time, although it's rather damp, I have to say. He doesn't mind. That helps with the blocking process. It'll block it to his shape. Uh, <laughs> and I think he's really lovely. So he's quite a lot bigger than... The original Tsutsu Bear, which uses four ply thin yarn and two millimeter needles. Um, and for, for Bernard, I used Aran Weight yarn. Is that worsted? I can't remember the other name for Aran Weight yarn. There's four ply, and then there's double knitting, and then there's Aran. So Aran isn't as thick as chunky, just for anybody who doesn't know about it. About these things. Um, so yes, yeah, so I used iron weight yarn and I used instead of um, two millimeter needles, I used, oh actually I think the original Sutu Bear uses 2.75 millimeter needles and so for um, Bernard I used four millimeter needles with the iron weight yarn. So yeah, so there they are together, quite, quite a difference in their size but he is gorgeous and it kind of makes him more of a cuddly bear than than the the little one the little one is just cute but he's yeah he's more of a size that a child would be able to properly cuddle uh, I used some Icelandic yarn actually the Aran yarn that I used for him so it's very hairy and for the first time ever in any of Cynthia Valley's toys I actually gave the the whole bear a bath. So normally you, when you knit these, you knit, start with the nose and you knit head and you knit the whole thing in one. Um, and so normally I would stuff the head once I put the eyes in quite near the beginning of the process. And it just helps to embroider the features in the right place and things. Uh, but normally I, I wouldn't unstuff it. But this time I did, I decided that the whole bear would actually benefit from being in a bath and he looked very funny in the bath actually a bit like a fetus in the womb I think <laughs> uh, but but I think that has benefited him so maybe I would do that in the future is actually even if I stuff the head I would take the stuffing out um, so and what else to tell you about him uh, probably oh yes just just one one uh, thing that I changed in the pattern and the tutu bear pattern uh, is that it, and it's based on my experience of making the motion friends toys so in the tutu bear pattern when you come to uh, the, the middle of the body here this is this is the place here where you leave a gap and in the tutu bear pattern you just hold the stitches there's about 12 stitches that you just hold on yarn or on the needles and then you do kitchen a stitch to um, fix it together at the end and in motion friends 
it must obviously be a, a development that Cynthia Valle has come up with. She actually, when she's, um, when you're preparing to knit the legs, she actually casts off the stitches for the middle and you, um, and you knit round and then you cast off the other side of the body. And that is much easier and you can't see any difference to the sewing up afterwards. Um, if you do mattress stitch, it doesn't look any different to Kitchener stitch really. Not so as anybody would notice. Um, so, so yes, yeah, so that was one change I made, but otherwise everything, everything the same. And yeah, I, I'm really, really happy with him. So there we go, Bernard. Okay, and I think just one more project to tell you about. And that, that's a lovely kind of different thing that I have not, never done before. Part of a, a make-along called By Hook or By Crook, <laughs> which is being hosted by Pamela, who I mentioned earlier, who has the Ginger Cat Crochet YouTube channel. And I'll leave a link below. Um, and she's had the idea of choosing a... a a crime novel of some sort, murder mystery novel, every three months and using, uh, and we all use that book to in inspire us to make something to do with the book. And the making can be, it doesn't have to be just crochet, it can be knitting or sewing or, or even art of some sort, painting or whatever, uh, really anything at all. And then, and then Pamela, uh, for the first book, which was, um, oh, what was it called? The Letters. Oh, I can't remember the name of it. It's gone completely out of my head. I'll put it on the screen, the name of the book that we did. And uh, and so we had from January until the end of March to make something and then send email a photo of it to her and then she did a little draw and there was a prize so if you fancy something like that um then yeah it, it's good it's good fun it's just a different way of having a a little something to inspire you to do something different so what i came up with because it was about letters uh was to make a letterbox so it was my letterbox here i didn't have a pattern for it and originally I was going to just crochet a cover for a Pringles crisps tube <laughs> that was that I'd cut down a bit to the to the height of a what looked like a suitable height for a letterbox and uh well that that plan sort of went out the window because uh you could see it was a green tube and you could see through the crochet so I thought I don't really like that uh, the next problem I had was that I actually ran out of red yarn. <laughs> so I was just using a scrap of uh, Debbie Bliss Eco Aran cotton that had been in my stash for years. And I thought there would be enough to make a post box, but not quite as, not quite enough. So I ended up having to make the letterbox shorter than I really intended and my original plan was to make this into a useful pot, but that the lid of the letterbox was going to go over the top so you would lift it on and off. And because of the lack of yarn, <laughs> I actually had to make it as a, a hinge top instead, which mostly sits on there. And yes, yeah, so and then I just added a, a black bit round, round the outside there. And... And so what I did because of not putting the Pringles box inside was to, um, I used the Pringles box as a mould, I covered it in cling film, then I soaked the post box in a mixture of PVA glue, white glue and water, so it's quite runny. So I soaked it in really well, put the cling film covered Pringle box inside and then let it dry and I let it I left it for a few days, so it was properly. So now it's it's nice and sturdy and hard, so I can't actually use that as a container. So it's a bit short and it's not quite as I wanted it, but there, there we go. I'm, I'm quite pleased with it. <laughs> and if you want to know what the next book is, then I encourage you to go and pay Pamela a visit. I will leave a link to the latest episode 
of By Hook or By Crook and you might like to join in. You have to let me know if you decide to join in. <laughs> okay, right then. I am just going to give you a little video now, give you a bit of a rest from all my chatting. And uh, the, this is a series of photos that I took last year, started in about March in 2023. And every single week I took a photo of this tree. It's a tree that my mother-in-law can see from her sitting room and she looks out over a garden and then outside her garden is this lovely Norway maple tree and she absolutely loves the tree and so I thought that it would be nice to have a record of it through the seasons and when I got to December I decided that really January and March photos weren't going to be any different at all so that's why it's, it's just running from March to December. And my son put it together as a photo montage so that it all merges, one merges into the other and I've added a bit of music to go with it. So just before I go, uh, I told you I was going to tell you about a, a kind of bonus video that I've been putting together for you. And this is for everybody who tells me, makes really lovely comments and tells me how much you enjoy uh, listening to the piano music that I play. So I decided that some of you at least, even if it's just one or two of you, <laughs> might like to just have a video of piano music only and what I've done is just use lots of bits of video that you if you're a regular viewer you'll have seen lots well at least once or twice before um, but I just wanted some pictures that you don't need to watch even to to go over the top of the music there's a couple of pieces that I played that that I showed you recently where I might yeah, actually see my hands playing so I've put them in as well so and I think it's um it's going to be just under half an hour of just piano music and I hope you're going to enjoy that. So look out for that. If, if you've subscribed and you've clicked on the notifications bell, then you'll just you'll find out straight away when that when that video comes out. So hopefully in the next couple of days, um, if you're watching this when this first goes out. <laughs> OK, right. But I really am going to stop now. I've been chattering on for ages. My goodness. So anyway, hopefully I will see you again very soon. And until then, take great care of yourself. Keep nice and busy with all the things that you like to do. Uh, I will see you very soon. OK, then. Bye.